Dear Captain, I want to complain about Terran vs Zerg. However, I am not complaining about any specific unit that makes it imbalanced. I just felt like the whole meta of Bio vs Ling Bane is slightly unfair, especially in lower leagues. Terrans in general get punished harder than other races for their mistakes, and it is really frustrating that a leading game could suddenly be reversed in just a few seconds. In this replay I must admit my early to middle game is pretty sloppy, as it is my first Terran vs Zerg in many days, and also my first game on this new map. I floated some minerals, but so did my opponent. I killed a few drones and overlords, but not too much. I won't say I necessarily outplayed my opponent, as I had some macro issues, but I also gave myself a pretty nice lead with my multitask and denied his bases to a point that he only had 3 left. Overall our supplies were pretty close throughout the game, but just one minute after I victoriously denied his bases, the game theoretically has ended. What happened is that I was caught out of position as I move commanded my army into my 5th base location, where unfortunately is also where his army is at. I definitely wasn't expecting to see his whole army at my side of the map and wasn't paying attention for a few seconds, and that is all it takes for a bio Terran to face a sudden death. I did try to struggle back into the game by turtling behind, like how Maru and Cure sometimes does, but it turned out I am not either of them. I cannot transition into high tech army, because all my barracks with tech labs are destroyed and I cannot afford new ones. In the end I felt frustrated and unfair that this game got reversed so suddenly. I am not saying I deserve to win, but at least I should be given more chance to create a comeback. As soon as Bioterran is forced into a defense position, the Zerg economy expands crazily and there's barely any chance left. Mech may still be playable defensively, but I despise mech players. I do admit that it is my fault for not paying attention, but why doesn't the game end when my opponent is not defending his bases properly? Doesn't we all make mistakes? Please tell me, Captain. Is Terran vs Zerg imbalanced? Or do I suck? This balance complaint form was uh, sent to me by Gan Sini, a Terran player in the Diamond League 3602 MMR from the North American server. And the question is very simple. He asked Captain, is Terran vs Zerg imbalanced? Or do I suck? Let's investigate. All right, here we go. Storm versus Gansini. Sounds a little bit like a magician. Uh, it's like the great Gansini is in town. Come and watch his magic show. This man can make entire armies of marines disappear in less than five seconds by walking into banelings that are parked at his uh, fifth base, is what he said. We're here on Babylon Letter Edition, played on the new patch as well. This is the first IOTIS on the new patch. Woohoo! And... Uh, yeah, in order to celebrate that, we will be having a new imbalance complaint form as well. So be sure to send in your new replays on the new patch, on the new maps, using the new imbalance complaint form in the description down below. Now, with that out of the way, what in the world do we have over here? A drone. All right. A drone scout. This is a very uncommon opener uh, for the simple reason that it delays your hatchery by a lot as a Zerg player. So this was a 17 hatch that started at 58. I think a regular uh, 58 seconds. I think a re regular 17 hatch might start at like what? 55, 54, maybe even 53 seconds. I don't actually know because no one actually plays 17 hatch. Usually you see 16 hatch going down instead. So it already is a little bit weird. I think maybe 51 or 52 seconds is, is actually the correct timing. So it's like six, six to seven second delay there on that hatchery. Um, so this is already a pretty nice advantage that Ganzini, the great uh, marine disappearant act man, uh, you know, he, he has in his pocket right now. They, they can't take away this lead anymore. What's that? An Urubu over here. Look at that. See him picking away at the grass. Beautiful stuff. Um, yet, uh, one thing that I actually... That I've noticed lately in the imbalance complaint form as a trend is that people, they, they are very upfront with their failures in the game as if that were to absolve them from those failures. And this guy went as well. I was like, yes, I, I know my macro wasn't perfect. Or like maybe my build order wasn't brilliant. It's like, well, these are important things. Not just because you say them, they don't matter anymore. It's like if, you, if you're in court and you tell the judge, yes, judge, I know I'm not perfect. I killed the guy and then, you know, I, I, I ate his legs. And yes, I know that is what a cannibal does. But, you know, it is what I've admitted to being a bad person. Surely, you know, you can... Just tell me to get home. It's like, no, like, you're still going to go to jail, buddy. And it's the same here. Just 
if you're telling me, if you're being honest, you know, that is a nice thing, but it doesn't absolve you from your crimes of having terrible build orders or just not macroing for five minutes straight. And you shouldn't forget this. This is very, very important to me because people seem to really, they kind of buy into it, you know, it, it, it gets them some sympathy. You know, it's like, oh, look how honest they are, but I don't really care how honest they are. I also want, well, I care about that as well. Don't want to be lied to. But I also want people to... <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> hey, buddy. Okay, this one. <laughs> That's one. That's one. Okay. <laughs> Hits himself in one link. Now look at the the second. I hadn't even seen that this first one was also incorrect. The second one is the one that really gets me. You, you can see that he's panicking as well as he throws it down. Look at it. Oh, a queen. Wait, not yet. <laughs> Come back. Go back up the ramp. <gasps> Queen's still there. Let me just throw it in the first location possible. Randomly up there. This is fantastic. God, I love this stuff. Sometimes I wish that there was a bigger audience for just low level play. I would love to just host like a, a tournament. Play it on like the big stage. Like an, an Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. Make, make it a, a big prize pool as well. I want there to be a lot of money on the line. And then just have it be bronze players slaughtering each other. I think it would be the most hilarious thing in the world. The only requirement for people to join is that they have never touched the game of StarCraft 2 before. Like, I I feel like this would it would turn StarCraft 2 less into a competition and more into a comedy show, but I would be so down for that. Holy crap. This is actually great. I'm actually gonna set it up. If any of you have, like, family that have never played, I want to get show matches between first-timers here. And I... I I, I absolutely need this in my life. I didn't know it until I saw this freaking Reaper throw down a grenade twice into absolute nothingness and hitting himself. This is diamond level, and this is already a high, very high quality entertainment. God, I love this type of stuff. All right, <clears throat> let's actually have a look at the, the build orders here. So triple CC, this looks honestly like a build order. Like this, this looks good. Like there's a tech lab. We have a Viking on the way. Hellions are being produced. Um, the Hellion harass, you know, it's pretty normal to wait for the first four Hellions or go out with the first two and keep three and four at home. We have almost constant SCV production over here as well. Uh, an Overlord sack to, to get a scout. Like, this game feels relatively okay. Um, except <laughs> for the Hellion harass, I guess. Let's, let's take a look at what my man is doing here with the Hellions. Goes in. No, not yet. Okay, there we go. Harasses fights a queen. Thanks to damage with the Hellion is a an advanced move. Now, a lot of high-level players will tank with the Reaper because the Reaper has a regenerative property. What I mean with that is that if the Reaper doesn't get attacked for a little while, it will get back its health. The Hellions don't have that. So what this player does, Gansini, the magician, is he just made the health of this Hellion disappear and it will never come back. It's the opposite of a magic trick, really. It's the guys that, you know, that take off your watch, that smash it with the hammer, and then they're like, all right, fun trick, now give me my watch back. There's no watch anymore. You just smashed it with the hammer. This is not a magician. This is a destructionist. You also have these guys. These Hellions move a lot like a critter, by the way. And not so much like how I see Maru usually use them. This is... <laughs> no, no, this is... This is... Look, look, look. This was... This is an accident. This queen taking damage is an accident. Let's take, let's take a look here at the first person of the Terran. The Terran's not paying attention right now. I, I saw that because he didn't have them selected. The Hellions are fighting the Queen, which is actually a good move. But that was an accident. This was an accidental good move. And thus, we don't count it. This is like people who win the lottery. Buying a lottery ticket is always incorrect. People that win the lottery, you know, they, they got very lucky. It's some insane luck. It is not fair. This is the same with these cars. They just killed this Queen, but it doesn't count. These cars were moving like an absolute critter, like an AI from like Hitman 1 or Hitman 2, which was produced in like you know, 2006 or something. You know, one of these guys just stands still for a little bit and then starts moving around, walks into a wall for six seconds and then resets. What is this, these guys doing? I'm very upset with that all of these Hellions stay alive. He just moved so deeply on creep while there were links in position. It actually pained me. And I know he was paying attention to his Liberator, which he lost. Killed some workers, though. Five workers for a lip. Maybe he also killed some with these aliens. I'm not sure. But it's about an even game. 
sure there is an issue that every single barracks was built at exactly the same time and yes we're floating 1200 minerals but let's not forget Gansini already mentioned that in the imbalance complaint form and thus we will not be talking about it all good job Gansini I'm glad you were honest um your lack of macro despite being a diamond player is something that we'll have to uh as in Dutch we say we have to see it through the fingers also known as turning a blind eye if you see it through the fingers and it also you pretend like it didn't happen classic Dutch proverbs love to hear it car still out on the map is also some some great decision making look at this uh, how, uh, this is like one shot away like all of these hellions are so extremely low a queen could sneeze in its direction and then it would just blow up <laughs> makes absolutely no sense but managed to do it only lost i think lost one hellion there uh, <clears throat> just now ling run by being sent out despite the well actually not much happened in the early game like one queen died and five drones so yeah the game is completely even uh upgrades are slightly faster here for Gansini. going for an eight rex i can't quite recall seeing that in the imbalance complaint form the fact that he went for an eight rex i don't recall this at all eight rex is one of these builds that is extremely all in or well usually is extremely all in because <laughs> <laughs> Gansini has been floating like 800 minerals for the past for, for the past like two and a half minutes so an 8 rex doesn't even really make sense like he could have gone for an 8 rex and already have five bases up as well because he's just constantly floating money I also believe he forgot his second factory which is actually the standard if you go for 8 rex you don't forget it you just don't build it but it's just a really weird setup that he's going for I don't quite understand it where's the tank what was this what was this entire fight? Okay, so he spots the run by. Now, usually this is a good thing. If you find someone's run by, you get to pick off these units. Gansini magically manages to make his entire marine army vanish, despite seeing everything on his screen the entire time. Like, this is not splits. I don't even know. This is. He just ran past the banelings. This is the opposite of the marine split challenge is the marine clump challenge where you see like it, for people who've never played the marine split challenge in marine split challenge you start with a group of let, let's say 16 marines and 12 banelings will come rolling at you on creep and you need to split to minimize the baneling damage okay and then if you go to the next level one more baneling gets added every level that you that you gain another baneling will be added so it gets harder and harder with the marine clump challenge you start with 50 bane links which kill all the marines and eventually you only have five bane links left which need to kill all 16 marines now i've heard that gun gansini is uh, actually the perfect the perfect marine clump player he has managed to lose 35 marines against only four bane links a feat that even maru couldn't accomplish when he tried the marine clump challenge so important to keep in mind when judging these fights is that gansini here is often uh Like his, his, good lord, these fights are really, really bad. He's, he's often trying to clump his units. I, I was mentioning that we need to keep in mind that his control is very poor, but this is really pushing it. He just... He actually just doesn't micro, but then he does control his units. It's, it's a weird combination of factors here at play. <clears throat> Do like the movement, though, overall. We have a fourth base on the way, still no second factory. Went for triple tech lab, despite this being an 8-rex. Usually with 8-rex, you just continuously produce marines, because it's a 3-base all-in. But because he was floating so much money, I guess he kind of just plays like this in general. Got extra production to spend his money. Don't even mind it too much. Would have loved to see a second factory, though, to add a couple of tanks. Maybe if you're playing against Ling Bane, it's nice to get a second factory with a reactor. Uh, so one factory can be producing tanks and get drilling claws and the other one can just be producing mines mines are one of these units that if you play them at a lower level which diamond is they're going to be fantastic let's have a look at that holy crap what were you looking at okay so this is what he's looking at right now okay this i'm on his screen he sees links and bane links. He... Where does he go? I, I, he clicks on the fifth base and then is surprised when the links and bane links kill his entire army. It's go time. A 
true magician, my friend. A true magician. He's also... This is a very... You know magicians are good when they make you feel emotions. And he's making me feel emotions that I haven't felt in years. Like, levels of rage that I haven't been able to achieve in such a long time. That I'm kind of glad. You know, it, it makes you believe that you're still alive. In the future, I'll just come back to this replay. Keep it saved on like my desktop if I want to get angry. You know, so they say sometimes that anger is great fuel for your ambitions. Um, I lack anger in my life, but... I can just rewatch this replay again and again, and I know it's going to keep making me angry more and more. Why do we have no factory units out on the map 10 minutes into the game? We've lost three tanks. Is it really possible that he's only produced three factory units this entire game? I think it is. This is also another... Oh, there we go. Good pickup. Actually a good pickup. I was happy with that. I was gonna say this is some garbage micro, and it was some garbage micro, but he decided to pick up his units. Okay, he denies a base. Which I like, but he also loses a lot of units. Which I don't like, because there was no medevac with this push. This was a sacrifice. So this is probably m resources lost-wise. It's fairly similar, honestly, what happened here. And there's also a fist base, so you don't even really need to completely have it saturated with like 35 drones. Although there's quite a few drones mining here, there's like 12 drones. And we have another push here going towards the bottom side. This base could also potentially fall. Um, please do note that at this point, Storm is extremely far ahead. He has a massive bank. Um, he has good tech as well. He has the Hydras. He's, uh, you know, his Hydra Link Bane, basically. Well, Gonsini is basically is, is stuck on an army that you can have with just a 3-rex build. Marauder Marine. No factory units whatsoever. No tech whatsoever. Does have an upgrade lead. And is going to continue having an upgrade lead for a little longer. Does not, however, have anything to deal with Lurkers. No Ghost Academy. Um, still no decent tank count. No 5th base. No sensor towers either. So... I think at this point, the game is extremely favorable here for Storm. Like, just extremely favorable here for Storm. I also like that we're seeing, uh, you know, the, so, someone that actually stands for for his own values. Gansini, that is. So he said, let's actually just read this again, in case some of you have forgotten. He said, Mech may still be playable defensively, but I despise Mech players. Now, other people might say, I despise mech players, but in order to play proper bio, you still need tanks and, and mines and maybe other things. But so far, Gansini has uh, introduced a style of play where it's literally just pure bio. And he also uses the tanks as if they were bio, never sieges them. Oh, and as I say that, he sieges one. Um, doesn't really use them in the fight. This is a nice uh, little drop, by the way. I love that he's pulling back the Marines. That is, that has potential for a decent fight. I like that. I actually like the way this fight, well, don't really like how he's gonna end up losing a lot but this was cool and now he pushes this base in as well this is this is legitimately okay multitasking he's not brilliant i mean it's not the greatest thing i've seen in my life but i guess it, it does the job here um there's bailings morphing in in this location right now should be capable of saving the base is not capable of saving the base um now okay this is the scenario where i said i deny two of my opponent's bases my opponent is now on three base surely i should be victorious right now now let's actually analyze this situation so before i said that storm was in a fantastic spot and it's difficult for me to imagine seeing him lose this game what is the spot like right now we have three tanks out so three factory units 25 marines 12 marauders Terran is gonna have better upgrades um but there's already a hive. So the tech is superior here for Storm. Storm also doesn't necessarily mind losing these bases because he has a massive bank and didn't lose a lot of the drones. So there's going to be a temporary loss of income, but it still is at 2,400 minerals a minute and it's going to stay at about 1k gas, maybe a little bit lower per minute as well, which is still a very decent amount if you compare it to what the opponent has. Uh, Gansini isn't maxed out yet uh, and has worse tech. I actually feel like this game is still completely fine for Storm. I, maybe if you give this to like there's no extra command centers there's no fifth base we're working off of three orbitals no sensor tower on the bottom side and then i guess this is the fight where he didn't pay attention for a little bit and lost everything i mean the thing is though here this is inter this is this is interesting okay Right now, Gonsini is pretending like his, his usual fights are better than this. But so far in this game, almost every single fight has looked pretty much like this. Two unseached tanks. 
the army not in position, not being split, having the most clumps as possible. Here the army starts getting controlled, and actually no supply has been lost yet. He could just pick this up, like, could just pick this up, pick, run this back to over here, and then if you were to have any amount of tanks in any position, the, the, the Zerg wouldn't even be capable of attacking, but for whatever reason, he decides to still stim in afterwards. Then loses the Manifex because he doesn't boost. And then he loses the 30 supply. So, actually, the point where he wasn't paying attention wasn't even the bad thing. The moment he started touching the units again, that's when it truly went sour. Like it has been going this entire game. Now the game is... Well, def okay, another thing. Like, I'm just... I'm just adding on like this is uh, like freaking compounding here with things that i'm upset about but let's first watch this fight pulls the SEVs to fight the banelings he's a an interesting he holds positions to deal with the banelings i've never seen this in my life holy crap look at this this makes no sense This is like using your neck to block a knife. It's like a guy's coming at you with a knife and you go like this. It makes no sense. This is the one part you want to protect. This is insane. This is a terrible fight as well, of course. I had a sentence in my mind that I wanted to go for before I saw this fight, but Gonzini is just... Not only making marines disappear here, but he's also trying his best to get rid of all of his SCVs. Only 58 left. Uh, could probably... Like, he just needs two factories. What I was gonna say is that... Another thing that I find annoying is that he... So he said he, he despises mech players, right? And he doesn't want to play mech. Now, this isn't completely fair because... At his level... The, the, okay, the one thing he complained about, right is the fact that bio in the in the bio versus ling bane it's so difficult for bio and i would say just play mech if it's easier right this is a this is a good suggestion that you could that you could give a terran player it's like hey if you're struggling against zerg play mech because that's pretty much the opposite it's really difficult for lower level zergs to deal with mech but if you were to tell this to a terran player i've done this in the past so i know exactly what they would say they'd say well but Mac is not viable at the highest level. Cyril and Rainer, they, they don't lose to Mac. It's like, well, mate, if you're hard stuck in Diamond uh, because you're losing to Zerg Banelings with your bio, you never in your entire life will have to worry about performing at the high level. Like, it, it is just a, a, a different world for you. It, it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant. Okay, just, just take the good advice. It makes absolutely no sense. Hey, Mac is, Mac is a fine composition. You can despise these players. Probably just jealous because they actually beat Zergs. It's like jealousy, that's what it is. These these other these bio terrans, you know, that hate the Mac players. They're like, oh, it's so slow. It's like, yeah, but they're winning games. There you go with your 23% win rate against Zerg, mate. Hey, my man doesn't even have a hotkey for sieging, sieging his tanks. What is this? Siege it up every single time. These tanks are just standing there on siege. It's starting to piss me off. Here we go. Now, the game has now officially ended, but in good Terran fashion, he stays in for no real reason. Well, actually, that's also not true. Terran stay in for no good reason a lot of the time, but Terran also stays in because it's actually the one race that has great combat mechanics, especially against Zerg. If Terran gets to stabilize on four or five bases, on eight gases, and they have like seven, eight tanks, they can go into Ghost. From that point on out, the game is pretty much reset. It becomes you can almost always turn it into a split map scenario my man saying that it's almost impossible for terran to make a comeback is completely incorrect especially in the terran versus zerg matchup it is extremely common to see terrans getting blasted in the mid game sitting and doing nothing behind planetary behind a very high tank counts liberators ghost all the works and then eventually coming back into the game so everything said in the imbalance complaint forum almost everything was incorrect except when when gansini you know, said that he was bad at the macro in the in, in the early stages of the game. That was, that was the, the, the part that wasn't a lie. That was not a lie. That was very nice. And I appreciate that as well. I appreciate honesty. Now, this fight is gonna go... Mm, Okay-ish? Terribly? Okay, I saw a couple of things happen here.
which confused me. Look at these marines. They just focus on them a little bit, okay? Just shot the factory, okay? No big problem, you may say. But then look at what this tank does, okay? Being attacked by Lynx, Bane Look at where this... What is this attack doing? This tank. Poof! Does it stop? Poof! Imagine being in one of these SCVs. You hear all the explosions. All of, all of a sudden, tank shells start hitting you. How did my man have the attention during all the clumping of Marines and Marauders to also A-move his own refinery? Fairly impressive. This factory is also damaged by his own units. Also fairly impressive. Actually, an okay hole, by the way. Managed to survive, but despite some, some minor failures in control there. No fifth base yet, which is annoying. Um, but maybe if you get your ghost production up, it could potentially be possible to... to nah, okay, it's actually really... almost It's, it's almost impossible. This, this Zerg also is, is, is controlling the Banes quite well. It's just kind of move commanding them in the way you're supposed to. Um, I like it. There's good upgrades right now as well at, at this point for the Zerg, right? You have 3-3 three, three at least for range and carapace. And there's no melee upgrades, but it doesn't matter that much. Most of the damage there is going to come from the Bane links anyway, not so much from the links. Here comes Mr. Zerg once more. Actually, okay, fight once again here for Terra, no? If he would have split this, maybe? Maybe. You're gonna be the one that saves me. Was this army just kind of AFK over here for the past five minutes? Might have. And the eco is so, so good for Zerg, though. Yeah. This is kind of useless. I really think having a, a faster second factory would have solved so many issues. The ability to just produce mines or to produce two tanks at a time would have been fantastic. But it's not the case. We're just going to kind of speed through it over here. Have any of these upgrades been done yet? Okay, yeah. We, so we do have the, uh, the range on the planetary as well. The building armor, which is kind of important. Could he actually stabilize here? I'm looking at this and thinking to myself. Nah. Nah, yep, not like this, right? Nah, no way. There's way too many veins. And there's just still only a single tank. How is this possible? Is he even producing tanks? Yeah, he's producing tanks. Okay, now he gets, an gets another factory despite never having produced anything from here. Also an interesting move. And this. Let's see how well we can clump this time around. Oh, all of them are in uh, five pixels. Can we do better here, guys? Nah, no. Nah, okay, well, put them in a line. Mediocre clumping job here. We'll give it a four out of five. Four stars out of five. Absolutely unheard of. He once again attacked one of his own buildings. I saw it happen. He just turned around. Did he shoot his CC or his medevac? I don't even know. Um, no GG as well. Absolutely love to see that. Yeah. All right. Like this. First of all, I think the one thing we have to note is that the macro was fairly mediocre. The splits were god awful. Um, but most importantly, the sense of what was happening in the game was completely off. After he sniped the two outside bases, he thought he won the game, but he was so far behind at that point already, and he didn't actually kill any drones, just the bases. So you deny some mining, but just temporarily. like you, It might have cost your opponent, what, like six, 700 minerals per base? That's like 1,400 minerals. He lost a bunch of units up top as well. Like The trades were, were good for him, but this wasn't some insane trade where you snipe four bases clean, you're on nine bases behind it. You're pumping out ghosts and medevacs. No, you were on crap tech. You were on crap tech the entire game. Never had any uh, support from your tanks or from mines. Never went into ghosts in your entire life. If your opponent had built any amount of lurkers, which the lurker then was ready, you would have never beaten that because you had nothing that could shell lurkers away. Um, and I, I think the main problem here is just honestly your micro. You say you despise mech players, but... I see no future for you for you in anything higher than the Diamond League unless you switch out of out of bio because like you do need a certain level of control your opponent has shown that you simply do not possess. So no my friends, it is not Zerg that is imbalanced in the Terran versus Zerg matchup, but it is instead you who sucks. And that's life. Sometimes you just suck. And you definitely did in this game. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy this episode of Is It In Bar Doer Like I mentioned before, new imbalance complaint form. Be sure to fill it in all the way. It's right now in the YouTube uh, description box. So be sure to go in there. 
And that's it. I'll see all of you next time for more videos. Thanks so much for watching and bye bye.